what's up what's up what's up this is Brittany from she abundantly at she abundantly.com i don't know i don't ask why listen to this if you are a christian if you are a believer your soul purpose and journey really every christian should become a student of the law a student of god's law we should all be in law school like we we should be called law students because this whole walk is is about i'm not talking about religion i'm not talking about follow me here but this whole walk is about law okay one of the reasons why the enemy has an upper hand on a lot of believers in different scenarios different situations is because he understands law he understands god's law and he banks he thrives on our ignorance of god's law okay shout out to you know, so I just came from working out. I feel skinny, but you know, fat just don't fall off like that. But listen, let's get back to this. As a believer, we have to know, I'm encouraged as I discover more and more. You know how when you read stuff, you don't really know or understand the implications or the impact or the reality of it until you sit down with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, someone had mentioned to me, you know what I'm saying? Sin was done away with on the cross. But do we really understand that? Okay. So as a believer, we have to know God's law because if we don't, we miss out on the benefits. We suffer more than we have to. So listen to this. Romans 8, 1 through 4 says this. Therefore, mm -hmm. this is after Paul was talking about how he, war he wars against his flesh. There's sin in the flesh and then there's life in the spirit and, and how sin is always there waiting. You, your flesh and sin, you know what I'm saying? They, <laughs> so, but he's saying this in Romans 8, 1 through 4. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, capital S, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Y'all being extra. Okay. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. There is so much in this one scripture. This well, okay, four scriptures, just in this passage that I'd listen, I need to study mo and mo and mo. But I am just overwhelmed of, of the things that I've gotten out of this. Do you hear what this said? It says, through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit gives us life and it sets us free from the law of sin and death it goes on to say that jesus condemned sin what condemn means is to sentence it and to basically to you know when the judge sentenced somebody they condemn them to jail for 50 years 40 years or whatever jesus condemned sin i mean he sentenced it so basically sin is like sin is in hell or sin is is um is in jail that's the word i want to say sin is in jail so if something is in jail it no longer has power over you i remember listening to a deliverance video uh, a man delivering this guy and the demon was speaking and he was saying this guy he's he's big in the spirit i want to keep him i want to keep him stuck but he was saying his sins i can't touch him he he was he was saying even his future sins I can't it's covered it's covered by the blood the demon said his sins is covered by the blood of Jesus okay it's covered by the blood what that means is because our sins Jesus took our sins from us that means he took the power of sin because the the wages of sin is death so that means he took the power of sin he took death from us by being sin for us a sacrifice of sin on the cross so that sin no longer has a has power over us and can't kill us or or condemn us to death which is a, a complete separation you know our physical bodies die but true death is a separation from god jesus took that from us okay 
So we we no longer are under that power. We we're, we're no longer what's the word? Sin no longer has a has power over us. Okay, so every sin that a Christian, a true believer, who has been born again has a new spirit. The power of sin, there is none. There's no power of sin over you. It can't condemn you. It can't send you to hell. It can't. Because guess what? Jesus already condemned sin. If if sin is in jail, quote unquote, how can it send you to jail? It's powerless. Sin is powerless. I'm, I hope I'm making sense here. Sin is powerless. It has no power over you. So that means all your sins have all they're they're forgiven past, present, and future for the believer. Do you understand the power? Do you understand the benefit, the the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ? And so when you when you are a believer, when you are in Jesus, when you have become one with Jesus, the power of sin is of no more in your life. Do you, I'm going to just repeat myself. Jesus sent sin, quote, just picture it. He condemned it. It's gone. It's sent, sent off to jail. Who, who, you know, in jail got real power over you. I'm talking about like for real, for real, not somebody who out here, the, the, our system has failed. You know, some people do be in jail and still be out here and doing stuff, but no, this is real, real justice. Okay. Who, you know, up locked up and still got power over you. No, 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 no. So. When you sin, when you mess up, because this is what the devil does. He will try to condemn you. Who I feel like punching the air. I just feel like it, it. I just feel like punching because I feel it right about now. Y'all, I feel it. He will try to condemn you. Remember what you did? Mm-hmm. Ooh, look what you did. See, you're going to hell. You know, you, ooh, look, Jesus ain't going to never forgive you. Ooh, God don't like you. God hates you. Ooh, he hates you. Mm-hmm. You, you 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 remember what you did, right? 15, 5 years ago, 5 minutes ago. Ooh, it's over for you. It's over for you. The devil will try to condemn us because of our sin, but it's false. It's phony. There's no power behind it because sin itself is already being condemned. Sin is in jail. Sin is in jail. That's like him. <laughs> He's basically saying, oh, sin coming, come, uh, coming out of jail. And it's going to get you. It's going to put that weight on you to where you, Jesus came. As if Jesus didn't already do away with sin. What the devil does is he try he tries to make you believe that sin broke out of jail and has put that weight back on you. And saying Jesus will never, God can't forgive you because you still bear the weight of that sin. Wrong. Wrong. So when the devil tries to condemn you. When the devil tries to sentence you because of your sin, you remind, you say, shut, shut up. You know, I was about to say something else. Okay. Cause literally shut the, shut that hell up. That's what I really want to say. Shut that hell up. Cause I don't even use that word like that. I really don't. I use it in proper context. Shut that hell all the way up. Hmm. Sin ain't got no power over me. So if I'm not, if sin was already condemned, I'm not condemned. So I'm not about to allow you devil to falsely condemn me. Shut up. I am forgiven. That's the weight of that sin is already done. Shut up. I'm saying this because what the devil tries to do, not just to me. I know he does it to you as a believer. That's what he does. He, he wake up. He, he don't wake up and go to sleep, but I'm saying he, he tries to condemn the believer. That's what he does. He throws accusations, but here's the thing. The devil can't hold nothing against you. The devil can't hold any sin against you that has been forgiven. When we all have our day in court, because listen, the whole Bible is nothing but law language, trial, witnesses, judge, law. That's why we need to become law students, students of the law. Okay. We all gonna have a day in court. And when the devil's up here talking about, uh, 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 Jesus, your, your daughter, your son did this, 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 this. Jesus is going to be like. I already that already paid for that. You can't you can't hold that sin against them because it was already it's already been sentenced. That's where we get that whole thing. What's uh what's it called? Y'all don't don't laugh at me. Double jeopardy or you can't you can't go back to the law, the courtroom to try to convict somebody of something and it's already been settled. If the judge declared not guilty, 
five years later, you can't bring that person back to the law, to the courtroom and say, hey, they're guilty of this. No, it was already been settled. They was found not guilty. Not guilty. So when the devil's up here talking about, yeah, they did this, they did this, and that, that, Jesus is going to be like, we already, we already dealt with that in the courtroom when I died on the cross. Not guilty. So guess what, devil? You ain't got nothing against my son or daughter. You ain't got nothing against them. Oh, I'm about to start crying. You ain't got nothing against them. So to every believer out here who was allowing the devil to condemn you, he ain't got nothing against you because sin is already cast out. It's already condemned. Do you hear me? So that false weight that the devil's trying to put on you. Yeah, you did the sin. I'm talking to you believers, but turn away from the action. Repent. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still consequences to our sins. That's where we suffer. That's why where we our relationships are broken down and, and curses still come about. Because there is still a law. <laughs> there is a law of righteousness. There is consequences for breaking that law. But the penalty of sin is done away with. You won't be condemned for that. So people, when people go to hell, because people go into hell, they're not gonna go to hell necessarily for the for the uh for the power of sin because sin sin was condemned what they're going to go to hell for is is because they rejected the one who condemned the sin for them you understand what i'm saying they're going to go to hell because they didn't believe or they didn't accept the payment of the sin that jesus paid i really hope this makes sense <laughs> i'm fired up just a little bit <laughs> But I really hope this makes sense. The devil ain't got nothing on you. So get up. Repent. Turn away from that sin. The reason why you have to do that, even though the power of sin is no longer up on you, it can't, you can't be condemned because of it. You still need to turn away from it because there's consequences. Yeah, you are going to suffer for having illegal sex, for fornicating, um, for dis dishonoring your body and dishonoring your God and dishonoring your father's name. You're going to, there's consequences to that. And it's, it, it has an effect on you. It, ha it has an effect on you and everybody around you and, and in your community. Whatever it is, when you lie, it has an effect on you. It eats up your heart. And these these when we habitually do these things, it opens up the door to the devil and to his demons. And they come inside and say, yes, now I got something to latch on to. I can't condemn you for it. I can't send you to hell for it, but I can make a living hell in your life. I can I can wreak havoc in your life right about now. I can do evil through you right about now because you open the door. Now, I need to become more of a law student, you know. But I just wanted to encourage you. Listen, that's all I got. Sin has been condemned. So it can't you can't be condemned because of sin. Y'all have a good day. <laughs>